Hello everyone, my name's Andy Lowe and I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at Flexitricity. We've been aggregating flexibility and making it available to National Grid since 2008 and we now have a 750 megawatt contracted portfolio which includes flexibility from combined heat and power generators, industrial and commercial load, backup generation, renewables, peaking plant, domestic flexibility and we now have a couple of hundred megawatts of energy storage under contract. In February 2020, I recorded a video to highlight our opinions of the key opportunities for batteries at the time. Since then, we've seen some significant changes to the markets and services these assets can participate in, and this has happened in parallel with hundreds of megawatts of new batteries coming online and a number of new investors entering the market. Much of what was said on the previous video is still true, almost two years later. Certainly, the concept of revenue agility is as important now as it has ever been, as is the question of which capabilities are needed by a route to market provider to deliver an agile optimization strategy. Today, I'm going to take a few minutes to highlight what we think are the key opportunities for batteries and share some information on how Flexitricity delivers value. Over the last 12 months, frequency response has been very lucrative for batteries. This has been driven by Dynamic Containment Low, or DCL, a service which was launched in October 2020. National Grid launched this highly technical frequency response service as payers bid and were procuring their day ahead requirement every morning for the following day's delivery, with participants required to deliver the service for the full 24 hour window. For the first 12 months, there was insufficient volume participating to meet requirement, so the market saturation point had not been reached. The result of this was that all providers earned within a few pennies of £17 per megawatt per hour for most of the year, and this £17 became established as a price cap on the market. It appeared plenty on social media over last winter that if you annualise that number, you would profile revenues of almost £150,000 per megawatt from delivering a service which requires very little throughput of the battery. Upside was also possible on a few days from taking assets out of DCL to trade them in the wholesale markets where the spreads achievable were better than the opportunity cost of delivering DCL for the 24-hour window. DCL has now changed. In mid-September 2021, National Grid moved to a payers clear tendering mechanism, and they also started procuring their daily requirement per EFA block. EFA stands for Electricity Forward Agreement, and each day is split into six four-hour EFA blocks. This meant that the opportunity cost of dynamic containment was no longer based on 24 hours as it had been previously, but rather four hours, a single EFA block. The volumes being procured were not variable, and the market remained oversupplied, with £17 per megawatt per hour broadly remaining the baseline. In essence, these shifts to per EFA block procurement meant there were far more opportunities to beat the £17 per megawatt per hour for the shorter four-hour windows, and so trading batteries in the wholesale market started to be more common. This change was happening during a period of, of record-breaking energy prices, more on that later. The most recent change happened on the 1st of November. From then, National Grid have been procuring variable volumes of DCL per EFA block, we're now seeing that the saturation point I mentioned earlier has been reached some of the time based on current procurement requirements. Each day, the market is now actively competing for dynamic containment contracts. And generally, the main factor driving DCL prices is starting to move towards being the wholesale market opportunity cost. We've seen DCL clearing at 1p per megawatt per hour and at £47.99 per megawatt per hour. So there is a lot of volatility in price, but average prices have reduced from the static £17 per megawatt per hour since 1st of November, which is what you would expect as the market starts to saturate. What perhaps has slowed this saturation in November is firm frequency response. Whilst we know as a service, FFR is being phased out in parallel with the introduction of new frequency products, it presented some good opportunity in November. Flextricity's customers have done very well out of this, with some earning average prices of around £25 per megawatt per hour over a 24-hour window, and as high as £46 per megawatt per hour in EFA blocks 5 and 6, which was the highest price in the market for any assets pairing these two EFA blocks. Whilst this locks assets out of DC and wholesale markets, these customers have earned around £18,000 per megawatt in availability payments in November, which was locked in a month ahead and as a risk reflective strategy that was set in October based on opportunity costs of the other things that we could do with the asset, it has been thoroughly vindicated. November saw four to 600 megawatts of batteries in FFR, depending on EFA block, which as I mentioned, might have slowed the saturation of DC somewhat. We've seen less FFR procured for December, but the requirements for DC are higher in some of the EFA blocks than they were in November. So FFR could continue to slow the saturation of DC.
We've also seen dynamic containment high launched, and there has been decent value there in some Ether blocks. And we're expecting to see new frequency response services, dynamic moderation and dynamic regulation, launched in the first half of next year. These will both be bi-directional, that is, there will be low and high versions of them, and will also be procured per Ether block in a pay -as clear market, with reasonably low volumes to begin with. Now, it's fair to say that the delivery requirement for dynamic regulation means it's less tailored for batteries, nor do these new services add endless depth to the frequency response market and safeguard high value long term. However, with a requirement for inertia expected to increase generally over time and particularly over summers, we do believe frequency response will be an important part of the revenue stack in the short to medium term. Of critical importance in terms of maximizing value is having the correct machine learning forecasting tools at the day ahead stage, coupled with comprehensive market access to ensure that in any given 24 hour window, per ether block decisions about pricing for frequency response contracts are based on sensible opportunity costs from the alternative revenue sources. For most batteries, these are the wholesale markets and the balancing mechanism. More on those next. The wholesale markets had a record-breaking September, with new records not standing for long before being beaten again. We saw consistently high prices in the thousands of pounds per megawatt hour during the evening peaks, with the system imbalance price, or SIP, reaching £4,000 and with energy trading platforms Nordpool and Epex having to increase auction or market thresholds. Whilst these prices were the result of a perfect storm of high global gas prices, unseasonably low wind generation, thermal and nuclear outages and interconnector restrictions, they gave a clear insight to the opportunities volatile energy markets present for batteries. Across our portfolio, we came out of dynamic containment during these volatile periods, and in September, we earned several thousands of pounds per megawatt more than we would have done if we had remained in DC. We've also seen volatility in October, and in one day in November, our revenue stack for the day earned one of our assets £54 per megawatt per hour, driven by a combination of ancillary services, wholesale trading, balancing mechanism, and cash out, or SIP. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk through how we make the decisions to capture this value. It starts at the day ahead stage, where we use internal forecasts to predict what will happen in the day ahead wholesale markets. Our day ahead planner is an algorithmic machine learning tool that takes this data and analyzes it alongside multiple other fundamentals to make a recommendation about strategies for the following day, including wholesale market prices and expected frequency response value. Our trading desk then approve this strategy. We have humans in the loop before our automated platform submits these prices directly into the Epex hourly auction, which clears at 9.30 a.m. We also trade on Nordpool, which clears at 10 a.m., so we can try and secure additional volume if we have not cleared it in Epex. We can churn out of a position if the price fluctuations between the two markets allow, or we can select Nordpool as our preferred market to make sure we capture maximum value. All of this happens before the frequency response auctions and having access to both Epex and Nordpool and actively participating in both allows us to capture maximum value at the day ahead stage. And there have been a few examples where this has added a few hundred pounds to the spreads our batteries have earned. This wholesale position then sets the opportunity cost for frequency response. Here, we have machine learning tools constantly running to make strategic recommendations. Broadly speaking, the algorithm considers the value secured by the morning day ahead auctions, the additional value possible from re-optimizing the position in the intraday market, which itself is calculated using models from our data science team, potential upside from the balancing mechanism, and then some buffers to account for risk. These prices are then submitted into the dynamic containment auction. And if we secure a frequency response contract, we then have the afternoon day ahead auction to refine our position before we move into the delivery day. So at the day ahead stage, we use algorithms and automation overseen by humans to make decisions. And we trade actively on both Epex and Nordpool every day to lock in maximum value. As we then transition into the intraday market, our platform continuously updates its recommendations for traders to execute to further re-optimize the position for the entire fleet, taking due account of frequency response coverage. But our traders don't have to rely on the tools, they are also there to capture uh, additional real-time opportunities. The platform is interfaced directly via an API with M7, which is the Epex continuous intraday exchange. All trades made, which can add up to hundreds per day, flow through our platform to create automated schedules and submissions to National Grid, which is something we do every half an hour to show National Grid the position of each of our assets and to ensure we have the correct pricing and the balancing mechanism to further optimize in real time. 
Dispatch happens automatically from our control room in Edinburgh, which has been manned 24 seven for almost a decade. The wholesale markets have been incredibly volatile this autumn and our platform and people have secured significant upside for our customers. We expect wholesale market volatility to increase in the future and are committed to keeping our capabilities ahead of the market to ensure we are always there and ready to capture this value. We've been trading embedded flexibility in the balancing mechanism for over three years now. In that time, we've been working closely with National Grid on understanding their needs and have seen significant improvement in the way the system operator utilizes batteries in the BM to help manage real-time system issues. Batteries provide an excellent resource for this. And National Grid are committed to being transparent here. Every single action taken in the BM is public. And in March this year, National Grid published their dispatch transparency tool to outline why certain assets might have been skipped in the stack. And by their metrics, things are improving. We participated in the reserve from storage trial in September last year, which was lucrative for batteries while saving National Grid hundreds of thousands of pounds in grid balancing costs. And we can stack the BM with dynamic containment delivery, helping us manage state of charge by securing good prices in real time. Again, this is led by algorithmic pricing. We're also seeing battery positions being reversed in the BM more frequently now, creating additional upside value. And of course, they are used by National Grid when they are available and in merit in the stack for normal energy balancing actions. It's our job to make sure we have the availability and price points correct to maximize value across the revenue stack. Anyone who is looking at the stats coming out of the BM should continue to be encouraged by what they see, especially as we see an increasing requirement for balancing as we continue to transition to a system dominated by intermittent renewable generators. The BM is a deep market opportunity which isn't going anywhere, and it's always a consideration for us when making optimization decisions, with both algorithmic and human-led pricing approaches capturing good value for our customers whilst providing critical flexibility to the system. In terms of how we access the BM, we have access as both a licensed electricity supplier and a virtual lead party. I should also point out that as a supplier, we have the capability of optimizing both SVA and CVA metered sites in the wholesale markets and in the BM. We're being asked a lot about co-locating renewable energy with energy storage. Subsidy-free renewables, particularly solar, is incredibly compatible with energy storage, given the times of day and year when the grid connection is utilized by the different assets. Depending on the metering setup at the site, there are a number of prevalent opportunities which we are happy to discuss on a case-by-case -case basis. Broadly speaking, we believe that a co-located site's inherent flexibility should be optimized day ahead, intraday, and in the BM to drive maximum site value. We recognize that this needs to be balanced with a long-term bankable revenue stream from a more traditional PPA, but we don't see these as mutually exclusive opportunities. The renewable generator does not always need to take priority over the grid connection to lock in value. There are some barriers present regarding metering dispensation, settlement and generation licensing, but we are working directly with Bayes and Ofgem on these points to drive positive change. We've also been working with more traditional PPA providers on partnership approaches here to help mitigate some of these risks. So the rule book on this one is not fully written yet, but we are one of the innovators holding the pen. No one service holds the answer to the battery business case. Revenue agility is as important or arguably more important now as it was when I filmed the video at the start of 2020. I also haven't covered everything in this video. For example, distribution network operators are now all purchasing their own flexibility directly from the market. We need to consider this on a case by case basis. But again, this winter, we have assets delivering services directly to DNOs. We're also working with some large PPA providers who are considering purchasing options from our flexible portfolio to help manage their own imbalance risk, which would provide some revenue certainty for our customers. Those are just a couple of examples of additional revenue sources. I also haven't touched on policy. It's fair to say that we're now seeing explicit entrance signals for batteries coming from the net zero policy suite, and our regulations team are working hard to expedite the market changes needed. The UK's energy transition is well underway and energy storage is a vital part of achieving our net zero goals. We have comprehensive market access with a proprietary platform which couples machine learning algorithms and automation with a team of 50 people covering trading, engineering, IT, data science, operations, account management and back office settlement. We have eyes on delivery every hour of the day and can back this up with a track record of market leading performance. We'd be delighted to talk to anyone who would like more information. Thank you.